Ah, oh, flipping heck. <sighs> That's so depressing. Here it comes, here it comes, don't break. Got a little durability test. Why doesn't anybody freestyle six inch props? Like, I understand that back in the day, when everybody was flying 2203 motors, we settled on five inch props, like on this iFlight Evoque F5. We settled on five inch props as the sweet spot for thrust, responsiveness, etc. And that kind of just is the default for what a freestyle in a racing quad is. But today, we have great big torquey motors, powerful motors, like the 2506 sized motors on this iFlight Evoque F6. And they can spin six inch props with plenty of authority. So why doesn't anybody freestyle six inch props? That's the question we're gonna tackle today. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. I wanna start this video with a sample flight of the five inch quad, just to kind of set the standard for what we would normally expect to see out of a freestyle quad. And I gotta acknowledge before I do that, that there is more difference between these two quads than just the props that they're running and the size, the length of their arms. The five inch has Zing E Pro 2207 motors at 1800 kV, whereas the six inch has 2506 motors at 1500 kV. So they are much larger motors spinning at a lower RPM on the six inch. And that's kind of fair because you would normally match a larger prop with a larger motor to give it more torque. We'll talk more about that when we fly the six inch. Now here is my impression of flying this quad. Uh, it is so maneuverable. And I think it's the, uh, the best quad we could possibly compare against a six inch because even compared to other five inches, I don't know what it is. It is so just maneuverable. I, I love, I love, it's so good to fly. So maneuverable. I love flying this quad so much. And fast too. Great prop wash handling. Like I don't, I can't decide if it's because the ultra wide analog camera angle makes it look like it's going much faster than it really is. I honestly don't know but it is just such a thrill to fly. It is a really wide angle camera. It's a lot harder to hit gaps. Oh dear. Well, okay. So that's the five inch, right? You get the picture. Next, we're gonna fly the six inch. And before we do that, I think we should go inside to the bench and talk about the physics of why a six inch quad flies differently, what might be desirable about it, and why we haven't done it in the past. Do you see the screen's black? I destroyed my GoPro Hero 8. Later in the video, stay tuned. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about the motors, the props, and the effect that the physics has on the way this quad flies. So let's start with a discussion of the motors. The motors on the six inch Evoke are 2506 in size, 25 millimeters diameter and six millimeters 
stator height. And that makes them about 10% bigger in volume than the 2207 motors on the five inch Evoque. And the number one thing that that does, that bigger volume does, is it gives the motor the ability to make more torque. You can think of a motor as a machine that makes torque, rotational force. It turns out that the torque a motor makes is roughly proportional to its stator volume. There are other things that affect the torque a motor makes, but they are more or less the same on mini quad motors of similar size. So that's like the defining characteristic. So we can expect this motor to make about 10% more torque than the 2207. And the way that manifests when we fly is that it spins the prop with more responsiveness. You see, when the prop is spinning at a certain RPM and you need to make it spin faster, the motor will need to generate torque and the more torque it can generate, the better it can do that job. And the key characteristic here is a concept called torque reserve. At any given time, when the motor is spinning at a certain RPM, a certain amount of torque is being used to keep the motor spinning at that RPM and to oppose like air resistance, the drag of the air and the friction in the, in the bearings. And then if you need to accelerate the motor even more, you need a reserve of torque that the motor is capable of making but isn't making so that it can then speed up with authority. And a bigger motor is going to be better at that. The key is to match the torque of the motor to the size of the prop because bigger props accelerate slower. They have more rotational mass because they're just bigger and they have more drag, air resistance, and so bigger prop, bigger motor. And whether that all sort of cancels itself out is going to come out when we actually fly the quad and we see how it performs. And that's because the mass here at the end of the arms has a big effect on how quickly the quad can rotate. So the further away from the axis of rotation something is, the more uh, rotational moment is the term, the more rotational moment it has and the more resistant it is to speeding up or slowing down its rotation. So there's a delicate balancing act you have a bigger prop which can generate more thrust, but it also has more drag, so you get a bigger motor to give it more torque, but that adds more weight at the end of the arm, which makes the quad fly differently, and that's why bigger quads will never fly the same as smaller quads, no matter how much you try and finagle that balance. The other thing we gotta talk about is the KV of these motors. The six inch quad has 1500 KV motors. The five inch quad has 1800 KV motors. And the KV is how fast the motor is gonna to attempt to spin when a voltage is applied across it. And since these quads are both flying on 6S, they have equal voltage. So if we just do the math real quick, 1500 out of 1800 is 83%. We can expect that this six inch quad will spin the motors at about 83% the speed of the five inch quad. And that means it's gonna make less thrust or more. We actually can't answer that question without putting it on a thrust stand because uh, it's a bigger prop. So it has more area, it's going to push more air and it's going to make more thrust, but it's spinning slower and do those things exactly cancel each other out or or is there a net gain or a net loss? No way to know without putting it on a thrust stand. Well, okay, I know you want to know how I busted my GoPro and I know you want to know how this thing actually flies in the air. So let's go back outside and let's put it in the air and let's see what iFlight has done. And the very first thing I want to do while I'm still on a full battery charge is just let's do a flat punch out and see how this guy responds compared to the five inch. It gets up there, right? We are clearly not giving up much in terms of speed. But where we are, uh, where we do feel a difference, and you can see it kind of even in just like moves like this, it drops slower. It just has more drag. It doesn't accelerate on the throttle punches right into a tree, okay. Doesn't accelerate on the throttle punches quite the same. Let's check the flips and rolls. Oh yeah, let's see that? A little bump there. Oh, big bump there. And this is on iFlight's tune, so presumably iFlight has tuned this just about as good as it can be, although I would be very interested to see what happens if we put Betaflight 4.3 on it. 
Uh, let me know in a comment if you'd be interested in seeing Betaflight 4.3 on this quad. I don't know if it's worth the trouble. So when we fly this guy, we're gonna wanna focus on what it's good at, not what it's bad at. Like, it's just not gonna excel at flippy flops like that, although as you can see, I mean, if I'm a little easy on the sticks, it can flippy flop. It's sharp stops that it's weaker at. And it's not gonna be It's not gonna have the same sort of drop as a five inch. But what it is good at is actually one of my favorite ways to fly. Uh, you might call it the stinger swarm way of flying, to be honest, where you are big swoopy moves like this. Cause you know what? I don't like doing flippy flops. Oh, hello, that's me. I don't like flippy flops. I always want to be the guy who does flippy flops because I feel like flippy flops are impressive. But I'm just the guy who does... I like being smooth lines. Smooth flowing lines. It doesn't have the kind of agility. Like if I bring it over here into the trees here and I try and do like, like sharp turns like that, it doesn't just sort of wah, go into the turns like a, like a five inch. But that's not what it's for. That's like saying that a tiny whoop doesn't have the same sort of thrust and hang time as a five inch. They're different tools for different jobs. Let's fly it some more. Scratch one hero eight, sad. At the beginning of this video, I asked the question, why doesn't anybody freestyle six inch props? And after flying these quadcopters back to back, I think there's two answers to that question. One of them is not BS and needs to be thrown out. And the other is valid and kind of can't be overcome. And the valid reason why people don't freestyle and race six inch is that there are certain aspects of the physics of a larger quad that simply can't be overcome. A quad with a larger wheelbase has its mass further from its center of rotation, and therefore it just cannot accelerate the same. And there's some amount that you can overcome that with larger torquier motors, but there's some amount that you can't. Because as you go to a larger torquier, more powerful motor, you put even more mass out at the ends and therefore you make the problem worse at the same time that you're trying to make it better. So then what about the second reason people don't fly six inch freestyle? The BS reason that I think needs to be re-examined. Let's just say re-examined. And that reason is cultural. People 
just look around at what other people are flying when they decide what they're gonna build and buy and they see that everybody else is flying five inch and they just go, okay, that must be what I'm gonna fly too. And I want this video to encourage you to kind of look outside that box at least a little bit because there is a person out there for whom the iFlight Evoque F6 is the perfect quad. Not somebody who wants to do kind of nausea inducing flippy flops like Mr. Steel. Okay, you wanna do that? Five inches, right, for you. But for somebody who wants to do longer, smoother, flowing lines, six inch is a really sweet spot. It has a little bit of the agility of a five inch with a little bit of the stability, longer flight time, better efficiency of something like a seven inch. And the iFlight Evoque F6 really sits nicely in that spot. If you've decided that six inch freestyle is for you and you wanna pick up an Evoque F6, I've got links down in the video description to stores where you can pick them up. Those are affiliate links. What that means is that I get a small commission when you make any purchase at the affiliated store after clicking that link. Click the link, do your shopping, check out, I get a little payment, helps support the channel, and it doesn't cost you anything extra. On the other hand, if you wanna know more about the Evoque F5, if you're solidly in the Flippy Flops five inch camp, this is a very good bind and fly. And I did a full review of it, comparing the different geometries it comes in, the X geometry, the dead cat geometry, there was a huge difference in how they flew. And I'll put a card on screen where you can check that out. Thanks so much for watching. Happy flying.